Today on Always Hungry, I went fucking savage, guys. Mm, mm, mm. Take me to prison, take me to jail. We'll be making the most amazing squash risotto. Let's go. First thing first, we'll start with the squash. This one is Japanese kabocha squash. And then we have the MVP of all squash, the butternut squash. So let's get started with this big guy here. There we go. Look at this color, baby. Woo! Oh, that was close. Voila. We'll do a bit of oil at the bottom here, a bit of salt, a bit of pepper as well, because why not? I'm gonna put some thyme right on the tray. Garlic cloves on there too. Just leave them whole, it's fine. They're gonna be there for a while. Now you can just kind of like layer your pieces of squash. Et voila. I'm gonna put some olive oil on there too on top. So everything grills nicely. So we're gonna put this in an oven set on 425 degrees Fahrenheit, which I have no clue what it is in Celsius, but I would probably say 180. I don't know, it doesn't matter because we're in Canada. Let's go. See ya. Next up, our beautiful butternut squash. This one, I'm gonna peel it. Got the tip like this, tip like that. All right, so this is gonna go right in the oven with the rest, because fuck it. Squash dice, baby. We're gonna make a beautiful vegetable broth for the risotto. We're gonna do celery, obviously. Put everything in there as we go. Leek as well, cut it roughly. Leek can go right in there too. We have one carrot. Are we gonna peel it? Absolutely not. I did wash it before, but you know what? The skin is full of good stuff for you. Good stuff for me. Okay, voila, carrot, right in there. Onions, same thing, we're just gonna cut these. Quite fine, you know, quite fine. Because we wanna do it express, express stock. Onion in the pot. We have some beautiful garlic here, we're gonna go with a whole head. There you go, right in there, bruv. Bay leaves, put a few in there, there you go. Five, and then some fresh thyme in there too. This much is probably good. Not the elastic. You know what? Might as well if I can clean my kitchen here. I have some beautiful green onions. These can go right in there too. Some massive parsley bunch. Cut this there. And then you can add all of this in there. I'm gonna hit this thing with some black pepper corn. There you go. And then next step is water. We'll bring this to a simmer and then let it go for maybe like 25, 30 minutes. Next step. We're gonna do one shallot for the base of our risotto. Take your time, guys, there's no rush. You're making risotto, you're supposed to take your time because it's for your loved one. And people can taste the love, so you have to be putting extra all the time. Shallot's good to go, let's put this aside for now in a bowl. That didn't work, perfect. Okay, see how easy is that? Okay, I'm gonna start this debate here. I heard that no one in Italy would, would mix onion and garlic, and even like in general for some reason, which is completely insane. Why would you limit yourself to never mixing onion and garlic like it was like a, like a devil thing to do, you know? It's like, come in the comments, tell me how fucked up that is. How wild I am for mixing onion and garlic together, you know? Take me to prison, take me to jail. No disrespect though. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do for the diced squash, Instead of blanching in regular water, it's boring. We're gonna blanch it in the stock. So we're just gonna put this in a little strainer, a little tummy. And just kind of like put it right on there. It doesn't get mixed up with all the vegetables. Leave it in there probably for, I don't know, three, four minutes. Squash right here. Oh, it's beautiful. And squash number two is also good to go. Just put this on the tray. The squash is all peeled off. We have this much. It's way too much puree for what we need, but we can always use it for something else. Some heavy cream, baby. I'm gonna put some pepper in there. Do a bit more salt. That beautiful stuck that we have here. And now, we blend. And good to go. Let's taste this thing. Squash mm, 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 mm. fingers. Pure can go right in this bowl for now. Finally, it's time for risotto. We have the stock ready to go. We have our dice squash, our squash puree, and we're gonna start this thing with a bit of olive oil. Very important that you go like on the low heat because you don't wanna get any, any, any color on your shallots and your garlic. And because you know what? I like butter. I don't care what you guys say. Butter is going in there. So butter and oil to start. This is a start, a good start to any story, right? This can go in, shallot and garlic. 
We're gonna add in some salt right now, black pepper as well, and then we stir. That's the base of the risotto, right? So you just wanna make sure that this oil and butter is gonna be infused with some beautiful shallot and garlic flavor. Okay, see? That's probably already enough. So here, I have the best goddamn rice for risotto in the world, which is not Arborio. It's called, I always forget, Carnaroli, Carnaroli rice. One handful kind of per person. So that's one, one for me, one for you, one for my girlfriend, and one for your girlfriend. There you go. No color, guys, see, zero color. And now, important step, we're gonna be like kind of making sure that every single grain of rice is coated. So now, we're gonna be good to add our wine. I won't show the label, because you know what? It's not the best wine ever. It's not Italian even, but you know what? Who cares? I don't. Generous with the wine, there you go. Okay, see guys, this is a good sign. These bubbles here, that's like big bubbles, starchy bubbles, that means we're doing a good job. That means we're off to a great start. It's almost fully reduced. There's no liquid left in there. We can go ahead and add our stock. I like to add three big little of stock to start with. And then I go down to two after that, and then I go one by one. I'm not even sure why, but that's how I learned and that's how I do it. And it works every time. Hey, get that mountain going. I went fucking savage, guys. We're gonna add some of that beautiful squash puree. Oh, wow. It's full of goodness. So we'll go two full scoop. And that should do it. Oh yeah, that's a good feeling. The color is amazing, guys. Look at this. Again, not traditional in any shape or form, but I like to add this little guy here. Fresh burrata. See, I'm just gonna cut this nipple off. Oh, <laughs> it fell right in there. Perfect, put this right in there. And it's been like tempering. Oh, look at, oh my God, how juicy that is. And boom, and now some magic is about to happen. And now we're gonna also add the squash here. Oh, this guy for me. And we're just doing this on very, very low heat. It's melting nicely. Oh shit, look at this. Woo! And now we're gonna add some parm in there as well. Boop! All this. Turn the heat off. We'll mix everything properly. Oh my god, look at this. <laughs> it's insane. Guess what? More salt, a bit of pepper, a little mixy mix. Time to plate! <laughs> time to plate! <laughs> Okay, our risotto is finally ready. Now it's time to plate up. Oh my God, this is madness, bro. I'm having a full on boner right now. Go like this and tap underneath. That is absolutely beautiful. So you might say there's enough cheese in there, but guess what? There's never enough cheese. So we're gonna put some parm right on top. Then I'm gonna hit this thing with some herb oil. There's chives, parsley, and green onion in there. It's gonna get some nice little flavor to it. Well, yeah. Get some black pepper on top as well. Final little sprinkle of salt. And that is the most amazing risotto with roasted Japanese squash and butternut squash dice and burrata. It's tasting time. Pretty good. Oh, look at this. Oh my God. Mmm. Cut. Too much. Mmm. Mmm. It's creamy. It's squashy as hell. I could eat this all day. On that note, if you enjoy watching this video and you want to see us do more of these videos, we need your help. So make sure, subscribe, leave a comment, like the video, hit that bell, all that stuff, and we'll see you on the next episode of Always Hungry.